Food and beverages considered today Italian excellences have in fact a foreign origin. Just think about the tomato imported after the discovery of the America or rice that arrived in Italy thanks to the trade with Asia during the Renaissance, as well as coffee from Ethiopia a couple of centuries later. All these products that were originally not Italian have been so valued in Italy that tomato sauce, espresso, and risotto, just to mention three famous Italian derivatives, are ambassadors in the world of Italian genius and good taste. A lot of food that uh, Italians enjoy today have not been around forever. When uh, Christopher Columbus sailed west in uh, 1492, he discovered new products that Europeans had never heard or seen. Columbus and other explorers brought many foods back from the Americas to Europe. Among these new items, they were corn, potatoes, and tomatoes. When these products arrived in Italy, they were slowly integrated into the Italian diet and used to make something that today we consider typical Italian dishes. Think about polenta, gnocchi, or tomato sauce. Corn, thanks to its similarity to other well-known cereals, was easily integrated into the Italian diet. With corn, Italians made polenta. It may be served as a hot dish or it may be allowed to cool and solidify into a loaf that can be baked, fried, or grilled. Polenta takes a long time to cook, simmering for about 45 minutes with near constant stirring. Quick cooking or instant polenta, meaning that it is pre-cooked, is widely used and is prepared in just a few minutes. Potatoes took more time to be integrated into the Italian diet, but then potatoes were used to make, for example, the famous gnocchi, thick, small, and soft, though dumpling. Like many Italian dishes, gnocchi have considerable variations in recipes and names across different regions. Once cooked in boiling water, gnocchi can be combined with misos, pesto, gorgonzola, or simply with olive oil or butter and with a lot of parmigiano. Naturally, Variants are the norm in Italian gastronomy. Next to the uh, more common type of gnocchi made with potato and flour, one can find gnocchi with, made with polenta, with vegetables and bread, with ricotta and spinach, with pumpkins, with eggs. Additionally, they can be cooked and eaten with broth, bacon in the oven, or even fried. Gnocchi can also vary in color depending on the ingredients involved in their preparation. The traditional pale of white can be turned green, red, yellow, and orange when one uses herbs, tomato, or vegetable purees in the dough mixture. Traditionally, gnocchi were eaten on Thursday, as an old Italian saying states. Giovedì gnocchi, so gnocchi on Thursday. In fact, it was a good idea to consume a nutritious meal on the day before fasting, which according to the Catholic tradition was precisely on Friday. Tomato is for sure uh, one of the most important ingredients in Italian cuisine today, but the misconception that the tomato has been central to Italian cuisine since its introduction from the American is often repeated. 
although the tomato was introduced to Europe in the 16th century, tomato made a relatively late entry in the Italian cuisine. Tomatoes, or the Italian name pomodori, in fact were considered toxic at first, and only in the 18th century southern people started eating them fried or in salads. Only at the beginning of the 19th century, tomatoes were used to make the red sauce for pasta and then pizza. In Italy, about 5 million tons of tomatoes are produced every year. Today, the country is a leader in the can and processed tomatoes. 13% of world production comes from Italy. <clears throat> Within Europe, about half of the production is made in Italy. And the variety of tomatoes that grow in Italy today is incredible. We even have a museum dedicated to our king of the table, which is located in Collecchio. These are all the varieties of local tomatoes. Rice may have been introduced to Italy repeatedly, in different periods, via different routes, by the Arabians or by the Venetians, maybe by Marco Polo too. Although no written documents about this commerce are available, the earliest rice cultivation documented in Italy can be traced back to 1475 when it was promoted by Galeazzo Maria Sforza, Duke of Milan in the Po Valley. The early crops must have been impressive enough for farmers since rice quickly became a staple in the Po Valley. Over time, rice growing spread to every corner of Italy, but never took on the prominence it has in Lombardy and Piedmont, where the fertile plain of the Po Valley provides suitable growing conditions. Italy is now the biggest producer of rice in Europe. Italians do not eat much rice, but Italy is famous for its risotto, and several rice varieties have been cultivated for this purpose. Arborio, Carnaroli, Maratelli, and Vialone Nano all capable to absorb liquid when cooked and yet have both a firm bite and creaminess that makes risotto so special. Arborio is for sure the most used rice to make risotto. Arborio is short, fat and slightly oval shaped and has a pearly white exterior. It has more starch content than any other rice and when cooked releases this starch, giving risotto its creamy consistency. This process of releasing starch is key to risotto creaminess and it's a process that only happens if it's cooked slowly with the liquid added a little bit at the time. Preparing risotto requires a minimum of 20 minutes of constant stirring and gradually adding the liquid. Like pasta, arborio rice is prepared al dente, which means that it should be slightly firm to the bite, that is a little bit less done than you would cook ordinary white rice. The most famous Italian rice dish is probably risotto alla milanese. According to tradition, the dish was created during the construction of the famous Milan Cathedral at the beginning of the 16th century. Saffron, zafferano, 
because also the risotto is called risotto allo zafferano because it contains saffron. So saffron was used to color the stained glass windows of the cathedral. And it was added to risotto the first time only as a joke. And now coffee. Coffee uh, was first introduced to Europe in the 17th century from Egypt through the Italian city of Venice. Soon the popularity of the coffee became widespread as the wine of Arabia. Due of its eastern roots, coffee in Italy was at first considered a sinful drink and deemed as an Islamic threat to Christianity. However, its popularity grew so much that it was decided that it would be a great sin to banish such a great drink. The first coffee shop, or simply cafe, opened in Venice around 1683. It became soon a meeting place to discuss business, to have a chat while enjoying a cup of coffee. The new habit rapidly spread all over Italy, in Turin, Genoa, Milan, Florence, Rome, cafes became so important cultural centers, meeting points for writers, politicians, and scholars. Cafes do not exist in Italy anymore, or better, they exist but have another name today. What Americans call cafe, Italians call bar. In fact, over time, the word bar began to replace the word cafe, thanks to English language influence and the more and more international customers. If you travel to Italy today, you can see hundreds of bars around a typical Italian city. You will see bars on every corner and sometimes up to three or four bars in one block. You might think Italians have a drinking problem, but don't worry, they are only coffee addicts. Although the association between Italy and coffee is strong and well known all around the world, only a small amount of coffee is grown in Italy. In any case, Italians consider the product a product of their own, and they really did a lot to advance the status of this beverage. The espresso and cappuccino, as you know, are two of the most successful symbols of made in Italy worldwide. A wide range of home espresso machines can be found available in stores and online today, but Italians still continue to use and prefer the mocha at home, a stove top coffee maker that makes coffee by passing steam from boiling water through ground coffee. This pot was invented in 1933 by an Italian engineer, Alfonso Bialetti, and Bialetti Company continues to produce the same model under the uh, name of the creator, Bialetti. The mocha pot is probably the most widespread kitchen utensil in Italy. The mocha is part of Italian life. Italians grew up with it even before they start drinking coffee. They see it in the kitchen. They hear the typical noise that the pot makes when coffee is ready. They smell the aroma all around the house since they are kids. And of course, they drink the coffee made with mocha as soon as they are allowed. 